Hey guys, it's Miss Misty again, coming to you from Northeast Park Baptist Church. I wanted to remind you that you can put your comments below and I can answer them next week. That would be really, really awesome. Okay, so last week we were in Joshua chapter 1. It's a fantastic chapter. A lot of things happen in the chapter. Yes. Time for questions and answers. So what were the Israelites getting ready to do? No, they weren't getting ready to eat. They'd already eaten their snacks. <laughs> That's right. They were getting ready to go into the promised land. Was Moses still their leader? No, he was, he died. Who was his replacement? That's right, it's Joshua. Can anyone remember what Joshua's name means? Well, he delivers his close. Can we get a little bit more exact? Who said it? That's right. He saves. Joshua means he saves. All right. So in Deuteronomy, the Israelites did a lot of what? Remember, we always say Philippians 2.14, do all things without... That's right, grumbling and complaining. And the Israelites did a whole lot of grumbling and complaining. So we have a new phrase for this chapter. You guys get to say it with me every time that we say it. All right, ready? Be strong and courageous. And when it's time to say be strong and courageous, I'll always point to you. All right, so the Israelites are getting ready to go into the promised land. Now, is it going to be all 12, 12 tribes? No, that's right. Okay, tell me about the other two and a half tribes. No, everyone was good. Everyone gets to go into the promised land. What was it that made them want to stay out of the promised land? That's right. There was all this great land for their cows and their sheep and their donkeys and all kinds of other animals that they had. And it's just on this side of the Jordan River that's right next to the promised land. And they said, we want this land. Now, did they get to have the land just completely free? No, they didn't. They did get the land, but they had to promise to fight with the other Israelites for the promised land. You guys are doing really good on the questions and answers today. All right. So they're getting ready to go into the Jordan River. And before they go to the Jordan River, what is Joshua going to do? I gave you a hint last week. That's right. He's going to send spies into the land. Now, what happened with the spies in Deuteronomy? Can anyone tell me? Yes. Ten were bad and two were good. And the ten bad guys got all of Israel mad and they tried to stone the two good guys. What were their names? That's right. Joshua and Caleb. And they tried to stone Joshua and Caleb. And then a great light came from heaven. And then... The Israelites did not get to go into the promised land. They had to stay in the wilderness for 40 years. What happened to the 10 bad guys? Do you remember? Yes, they died. No, they didn't get bit by snakes. No, they didn't drink bad water. Can anyone else remember? From plague. That's a sickness. They died from plague. Okay, so now we're getting ready to send spies into the land. We're going to start chapter 2. All right. What are we going to say? God gave us two ears and one mouth so that we listen twice as much as we talk. Very good. All right, and ready? The other thing that we say, the Bible. No, you got to say it with me. The Bible is the inspired word of God. Every word in the Bible is true. All right, chapter 2 of Joshua. And Joshua, the son of Nun, sent two men secretly from Shittim as spies, saying, Go view the land, especially Jericho. Now, how is this different than the last time? That's right, different number of spies. How many is he sending? Two. Good job. You're listening. Two instead of twelve. Okay. And the spies went and came to the house of a woman who was not a very good girl. 
and her name was Rahab. And they stayed the night there, or they, they stayed there. And it was told to the king of Jericho, Behold, the men of Israel have come here tonight to search out the land. Then the king of Jericho sent to Rahab, saying, Bring out the men who have come to you, who entered your house, for they have come to search out the land. But the woman had taken the two men and hidden them. And she said, True, men came to me, but I did not know where they were from. And when the gate was about to be closed at dark, the men went out. I don't know where the men went. Go quickly, for you will overtake them. So you know what she's saying there? She's saying, if you leave now, you just might catch them. All right, so verse 6. But... She had brought them up to the roof and hid them with the stalks of flax that they had laid under the roof. Now, flax is a grain that's kind of like wheat, but sometimes you can eat the seeds. But what they usually use flax for is to make material out of. So she has all of her flax and she hid the guys under that. So imagine wheat. Wheat is a grass that sometimes stands anywhere from here. And she has it all cut up and she covers them with it and they're hidden under that. All right. So before the land, before the men lay down, she came up on the roof and she said to them, I know that the Lord has given you the land and that the fear of you has fallen upon us and that all the inhabitants of the land melt away before you. Now we've heard that phrase before. Do you guys remember where we heard that phrase? Yes, we heard it in either Numbers or Leviticus. God said that he would put fear in the hearts of the people that were in that land that the Israelites were going to have. And they would, they would be scared. And some of them would even just run away. All right. So that's one of God's promises that he made. And here it is 40 years later. And the people who live in the land are still scared. They're scared of the Israelites. All right. Verse 10. Rahab is still talking to the, uh, the two um, spies. And she says, for we have heard how the Lord dried up the river, the water of the Red Sea before you came out of Egypt and what you did to the two kings of the Amorites who were beyond the Jordan to Sihon and Og, whom you devoted to destruction. Do you guys remember that? That was, that was quite a long ways ago. Sion and Og were coming against the Israelites and they destroyed them utterly. Utterly means completely. All right. And she's keeping on talking in verse 11. She says, as soon as we heard it, our hearts melted. That means that they were so scared that they felt like they were melting. And there was no spirit left in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in the heavens above and on the earth beneath. And you want to know something really cool about this? She says it with a capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. Does anyone remember how the Hebrews say that? Pretty close. They just say the consonants. So it's Yahweh. And um, she's, she's saying it the way that, that they say it. And that's really, really cool. She's heard of them. And the people are scared. All right, we're in verse 12. Now then, please swear to me by the Lord that as I have dealt kindly with you, you also will deal kindly with my father's house and give me a sure sign that you will save alive my father and mother, my brothers and sisters and all who belong to them and deliver our lives from death. And the men said to her, our life for yours, even to death. If you do not tell this business of ours, then when the Lord gives us the land, we will deal kindly and faithfully with you. I wonder what's going to happen, don't you? What sign are they going to use? That's got to be weird. She can't put a big sign up on her door that says, hey, don't touch this. This is, this is uh, the house that God is saving. I wonder what they're going to do. 
Let's find out, okay? Verse 15. Then she let them down by a rope through the window, for her house was built into the city wall so that she lived in the wall. Now that sounds kind of weird to us because we have houses and our houses aren't connected to other things. But their houses were made inside the walls. Their walls were so wide that in some of the towns, it was said that they could have chariots, two chariots side by side, go across on the wall. So that means that the walls were pretty wide if her whole house fit inside of it. Okay, so let's keep that in mind when we're thinking about some of these cities that these aren't little walls like we're used to. You know, most of our house walls are maybe this big, you know, sometimes a little bit wider, but their houses were many feet wide. All right. Now let me find where I lost my place. All right, so um, Rahab said to them, Go into the hills, or the pursuers will encounter you. Hide there three days until the pursuers have returned. Now, do you guys know what pursuers are? If you pursue something, that means you're going to chase after it. If you're going hunting um, and you pursue an animal, that means you are hunting for it. You're chasing it until you catch it. Okay? So she says... If you hide here for three days, then it's safe for you to go on their way. All right. And the men said to her, we will be guiltless with respect to this oath of yours that you made us swear. Behold, when we come into the land, you shall tie this scarlet cord in the window through which you let us down. And you shall gather into your house your father and your mother, your brothers, and all of your father's household. Then, if anyone goes out of the doors of your house into the street, his blood shall be on his own head, and we shall be guiltless. But if a hand is laid on anyone who is with you in the house, his blood shall be on our head. But if you tell this business of ours, then we shall be guiltless with respect to your oath that you have made us swear. Okay, so there's a whole lot of oath talk here. And an oath is a promise. So they have promised, if you don't tell the king what we're doing here, then you and your whole house shall be saved. But... You have to stay inside your house when it's time for us to come and attack. All right. So can anyone think of another instance where people had to stay in their house so that they wouldn't die? Let's think way back to Exodus. All right. Yes. Around the time of the 10 plagues, we had the death angel, the plague of the death angel. And the Israelites had to stay inside their house while the death angel passed over because if they left their house, they would surely be killed. So to stay protected, her whole family had to stay inside the house. So keep that in mind. All right. So, oh, also... Who knows what color scarlet is? We don't use that word a lot nowadays. Can anyone think of it? Mm, not purple. Any other guesses? Nope, not green. What? Pink is so, so close. Good job. Can anyone guess it? If pink is close, then it has to be, that's right, red. Scarlet is the color of red. That is also something that you need to remember. Okay, so the two spies departed. I'm in verse 22. And they went into the hills and remained there three days until the pursuers returned. And the pursuers searched all along the way and found nothing. Then the two men returned. They came down from the hills and passed over and came to Joshua, the son of Nun, who is their leader. Don't forget that. And they told him all that had happened to them. And they said to Joshua, Truly, the Lord has given all the land in our hands, and also all the inhabitants of the land melt away because of us. 
Isn't that exciting? Now, the last time that spies went in the land, the 12 spies went in the land, the 10 bad guys, they said, we're like grasshoppers in front of them. They're going to eat us. Our children are going to be hunted by them. And oh, we're all going to die if we try to go in there. And only Joshua and Caleb said, we can do this. But this time, the spies came back. And this is so exciting. They said, truly, the Lord has given all the land into our hands. And also, all the inhabitants of the land melt away because of us. That is so exciting. God made a promise, and it's come true. Isn't that so cool? All right, so this is the end of chapter 2. In chapter 3, we're going to go other, over another part of water, a river instead of a sea. But it's going to be really, really cool how God does this for them. I really, really miss you guys. Don't forget to put your comments below.